Hello everyone. Today I'll be showing you how to make a nuclear reactor in Tech It 2 1.2.2 2024. Here are the materials that you'll need. You'll need a nuclear reactor, a MV transformer, a MFSU, a HV transformer, 4x1 inch HV cables, a LV transformer, six nuclear reactor chambers, one electric furnace. This is for our um, purposes of testing. You might want to use this to troubleshoot your build. Glass fiber cable, a lot of coolant cells, a lot of heat vents, and a good amount of uranium cells. Along with your thermal monitor, optional howler siren, and your not so optional lever. All right, so we are gonna start out with our nuclear reactor. This is our main nuclear reactor. The reason why I have it on this step up is because you're gonna to need to put a reactor chamber on the bottom, on all the sides, and on top. This is the preferred method to get the most out of your build. We're gonna start with our HV cable. Uh, I would go with the four by one inch it's basically a waste of time and resources if you don't get anything else. And it holds the most power. You want to start off with your HV transformer. You want to make sure the red side goes toward your reactor. There we go, like this. You're going to take your glass fiber cable and lead it up to a MFSU. That MFSU will be able to store power when it's running and your other devices no longer need power or are full of power. And for, of course, for your any of your mechanical components, you want to have a electric wrench. This is important because if you try to break it with a pickaxe or any other item, it will disappear. So after you have your MSFU down, MFSU, yeah, MFSU down, you want to get your glass fiber cable and hook it up to your MV. Of course, you want your red to be this way. Of course, it's my apologies. MFSU this way. Green going your inlet. See, red is your inlet. So is green for your MFSU. Glass fiber, and then LV transformer. As you see, I want to take a look. Let me pause this video real quick and look at the sequence. There we go. Now, for our test subject, we're going to have an electric furnace. Let's go to test how much power we have. And let's just put some gold ore in there. There we go. Get that in there. Now, we're going to want your thermal, uh, your optional howler, alarm, lever. And redstone. Then we'll get up to these later. First and most importantly, in my opinion, is your thermal monitor. Keep it at 500. Don't change it. That is that should be the absolute hottest your generator or your reactor should be. Hook it up to this howler alarm, which we will see how that works later in conjunction with this. Of course, your lever. It's very important. Take uranium cells, and I'm only using two. You can use more, but I recommend two for your first build, then build up from there. I'm going to surround this with our heat vents. Obviously, this is just for test purposes. Get more 10k coolant cells or the double coolant cells. Way better for the amount of time or the amount of energy you want to output. Especially keeping your base safe if you have it inside of one of your factories. Oh. That was odd. All right. Kind of throw our gold ore in there. 
I'm gonna switch this on. As you see, I started to deplete. This is wrong. Now this is my apologies. I will redo this. This is my bad. I'm gonna put it out this way. Green. Green means go. This transmits. As you see, gold ingot. This is starting to collect power. And there you go. That is your nuclear reactor. Now, for the Howler Siren, what does that do? Well, it tells you when you have a overheating incident. But we're just going to take all these cooling instruments out and let this overheat. Now, as you see, when the reactor overheats, it sends a redstone signal through the thermal monitor, which activates the siren. I recommend this for any build, so you don't blow up your base. And this can be heard from almost anywhere. Yeah, so you hear from that far. And farther. Alright. Now, while the reactor is overheating, it's starting to smoke. Obviously, you'll see visual smoke, and for all intents and purposes, I removed some of the equipment attached to it so we can speed up the heating process. Okay, as you guys see, it is now starting to explode. That's the explosion. Now the explosion does but does depend on how much fuel is in it. As you saw, I only had two rods in there. That isn't enough for an explosion of this size. I added a couple of quad cells to it, and this is the reaction I got. So as you see, it is devastating. It will destroy your whole base. That's all I have for this tutorial today, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.